Hey guys, welcome to a video tutorial. Uh, my name is Joel. I am part of my flight director and today I'm going to show you how to fully optimize Flight Simulator um, and get it running and getting it running pretty fast as well. So Flight Simulator inherently is not very well optimized and there are a few tricks that can help you optimize it for uh, smoother running like that you don't get into any problems with crashing or um, FPS drops, anything like that. Okay, so uh, as some of you may already know, um, I have written an article that explains everything I'm about to show you, but uh, for those that are a little lazier and for those that just would like to watch a video instead, I'm going to explain it to you. So there's this guy in the FS community, his name is Jesus. He's created um, a set of tweaks that will tweak your fsx.cfg file. Um, this in turn makes your flight simulator um, a lot more stable. Now instead of going through all of his tweaks, the easiest thing you can do is go to this website venatubo.com slash fsx.html. Now it's very, sim very simple, it's um, just a form. Here you click on how many threads you have, I for example have eight. Um, I don't have hyper threading on so I'd write, I put in no. My s the speed of my CPU is about 4.2. Um, the reason being is I overclocked it. Uh, it's very simple, honestly. You just go through, um, get, you know, I have a GTX 570, so 480 or better seems to be right in this case. And I do want the V-Sync fix applied. Uh, this is normal. So once you have all of this set, you want to find your fsx.cfg file and that's very simple. You go on your hard drive. It's not going to be under program files. It's going to be under users, whatever your username is, app data, roaming, Microsoft, fsx, and should be right under there. Let's copy this entire thing. Have it all scanned and copied. Here, let me start from the beginning. Copy it. Control C, then go into your fsx.cfg file. That should be under users, Joel, app data, roaming. All right, right over here. So, like that, I can just highlight this. Control V, file, save. You might want to make a backup, by the way, if you haven't already. Um, but otherwise you can actually delete this file and Flight Simulator will make a new one, so it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so now that that's all set, there's one last thing I want to talk about, and that's actually two last things I want to talk about. One is anti-aliasing. That's basically when Flight Simulator or an outside program um, ha renders the Flight Simulator or whatever game you're playing so that the jaggedy edges are smoothed out. Um, so in this case I use something called NVIDIA Inspector. Now you could download this on Google. You could just Google it and download the newest version. Uh, you open it up and you would use this driver version, this driver profile settings button. Should be a screwdriver. And right over here, it should be under MS Flight Simulator X. That's what you want to click. And what that does is it'll open up um, the anti-aliasing settings you have for that exact program. So when you get to this page, just follow these instructions. You want the anti-aliasing behavior flags on none, the mode you want on override any application setting. The setting is something that you can control for yourself. I personally like 8 times S. Um, it's got a combination of multi-sampling and super-sampling that works for me. If you have uh, an older graphics card, I recommend recommend four times multi-sampling. Uh, the transparency super sampling, I have it on four times super sampling. Um, you can control that for yourself too. However, the anisotropic filtering mode you want on user defined or off. In this case, I have the setting itself at 16 times. Um, negative LOD bias on clamp, quality on high quality. The power management mode, I shouldn't have it on adaptive, I should actually have it on prefer maximum performance. Um, that'll put performance above everything else. And the frame rate limiter, FSX does have its own frame rate lim limiter, but I, however I prefer using the one that's built into the NVIDIA inspector. I could keep it at 30 FPS 
um, sometimes I won't even reach 30 FPS but it definitely helps smooth out frame rates so I apply these changes now there's one last step that's to go into flight simulator itself okay so once you get on the flight simulator page you want to go under settings customize and this is where all the magic happens um, traffic for me I have an external traffic program so I keep everything on 0% weather I like to keep my draw distance at 80 miles um, the reason being is I actually have REX as well and it sets it independently um, the cloud coverage density you want it on uh, maximum and the rate at which weather changes I have it on medium um, I also disable turbulence and thermal effects however if you have an external weather program it'll do it independently scenery now this is where things really change if you have a computer that can't handle high scenery I recommend uh, the settings I have right here actually uh, put I put the scenery complexity on normal and the autogen density on normal um, I have everything actually on medium high however when I'm flying in areas that are less taxing on my computer I'll set scenery complexity to extremely dense or very dense and the autogen to very dense or extremely dense as well this provides a lot nicer experience in my opinion especially around the city area aircraft what is a real frame rate killer is when the aircraft casts shadows on the ground or on itself so what I do is I find these almost useless so I turn them off however obviously you would like the landing lights to illuminate the ground um, and then if you'd like you can add 2D panel transparency I keep it on 0% because I don't even use the 2D panels anyways in the graphics area if you have an external frame rate limiter I recommend putting the target frame rate here on unlimited um, if not I recommend around 30 or 25 uh, the full screen resolution you definitely want to have that be the same resolution as your monitor filtering I wouldn't go above bilinear um, it's very taxing on your computer if you have tri trilinear or anisotropic filtering on um, DirectX 10 causes a lot of problems so I'd take that off as well lens flare and light bloom I don't need and it's also pretty taxing advanced animations I do keep on that it provides things like wing flex really cool uh, animations now for the global texture resolution I have it on very high however many do put it down to high or medium and that's it I mean if you have all of those set up you shouldn't have any problems running flight simulator smoothly as long as you don't have a very outdated PC so that's it guys thanks a lot for watching my name again is Joel I'm from my flight director and I hope that this video is useful for you